Welcome to the Digital Textile Design and Print course video recaps. This is the first of a series of little video shortcut recaps we've made, which will help you to familiarize yourself with the programs we use, including Photoshop and Illustrator. The end goal is to familiarize yourself to the point where you can execute the tasks necessary to create your own unique fabric for the purposes of this course. For today, your outcome is going to be vector versus raster images, basic navigation and familiarization of the application's environment, including shortcuts and tools, automatically turning a hand-drawn illustration into a vector, working with color by creating a project-specific sample color group, using the pen tool to manually trace, layers, and creating automatic and manual patterns. Requirements. At least a basic understanding of operating a computer is required, PC or Mac. Adobe Illustrator CS6 or CC installed. Vector versus raster images. Vectors. Usually well suited to illustrations, a point-based file. Infinitely scalable without loss of quality or resolution. Common file types include .ai, native illustrator file, and .svg, universal file format. Raster, usually photos, which are pixel-based images. Resolution specific when it comes to quality. Common file types include .jpg, jpeg, and .png. A limiting factor to consider is file size, i.e. especially when it comes to download speed online. Creating a new file. Open Illustrator, go to File, New, type a file name, i.e. pillowcase, include the date. There is no need right now to indicate the number of artboards required as we can always change it later. We'll be setting the size to the standard pillowcase dimensions of 450 by 450 millimeters. We won't be looking at the rest of the new file settings in this lesson. Press OK. The canvas and shortcuts. The white block is your artboard, otherwise known as a canvas in Photoshop. You'll be working with your final artwork on the canvas, as when exporting your design, the application only exports that which is on the canvas. The grey area can also be used to place objects, but won't be included in the export. Conversely, when you save in the native.ai format, the objects in the grey area are also saved. We first need to acquaint ourselves with a couple of the most useful shortcuts to navigate the workspace. By keeping the spacebar depressed, you'll see the cursor turns into a hand icon. By left-clicking the mouse simultaneously, you're able to move the view of the artboard. The hand tool can also be found on the Tools panel. If you depress Ctrl or Command on Mac, plus Spacebar at the same time, the cursor turns into a magnifying glass with a plus sign. If you then left-click the mouse simultaneously, you'll zoom up. Alternatively, pressing Alt at the same time lets you zoom out will notice a minus sign indicating as such. The Mac shortcut is command and the plus or minus sign on the keyboard. At the top right you'll see Essentials. The tiny arrow indicates a drop-down menu with various workspaces to suit your needs. These workspaces will provide the specific tools necessary for what you seek to accomplish instead of having to open the tool separately via the menu window. Creating a vector from a hand-drawn illustration. To import a file, go to File, Place, or you can drag it into the application from Folder View. Ensure your photo of your illustration is high contrast. Feel free to use an app from the Play Store or iStore to accomplish this for now by searching Photo Editor. To resize your image, hover your cursor over one of the nodes of the bounding box to press Shift, which is the shortcut to keep the proportions intact and drag, making it smaller. In this case, Click on the image and drag it onto the canvas. Ctrl plus Z is the shortcut to undo an action if you need to. The command is also found by going to Edit, Undo or Redo. We're currently on the Selection tool, mostly used for moving objects around the workspace. Hovering over the tool displays an alt text bubble description. There are various vectorization options to explore by going to Window, Image Trace. The objects need to be selected to have the options made available. One can move the tool palette by dragging the top bar. Use the collapse icon arrows to minimize the window. You can also drag it into the right toolbar if you prefer. 
Go to Objects, Image Trays, Make and Expand. Double click to select the bounding box, click once more to select the box and press Delete on the keyboard. This is a shortcut to using the Direct Selection tool. As designers, we're always looking for ways to save time and enhance workflow. Not having to select different tools for each operation every time bypasses tedious actions, which isn't necessary at all. We're now able to directly select our vector design. We can see that our design consists of blue lines and nodes. Ideally, we're looking for the least amount of nodes on our design to optimize the final file size. Go to Object, Path, Clean Up and Object, Path, Simplify. You'll notice you can also use this function to create variations on your design. You'll want to duplicate your design before playing with these options. Click on your design and press Ctrl plus C to copy and Ctrl plus V to paste. These options can also be accessed via the Edit menu. The design's various elements are currently grouped. One can ungroup by right-clicking and selecting the option, or keep the grouped elements intact, but still be able to select the various elements. We do this by clicking on the object, double-clicking, and then clicking again to be able to select one of the elements within the group. This is called Isolation Mode. To leave this mode, double-click on the canvas. Again, this is a shortcut to using the Direct Selection tool. If you decide to ungroup the design, simply draw a marquee around the elements, right-click and select Group to regroup. When it comes to the stacking order of your work, click on the design element, then right-click to bring to front or center to back as required. Color. We're now going to import or place a photo into the workspace to sample color from. Go to the Swatches palette and click on the drop-down menu to select New Color Group. Name it specific to your project, i.e. pillowcase. When you hover over the folder icon, you'll be able to tell it's the group you want to add to. Select the eyedropper tool and choose one of the preferred colors. You'll notice it now appears on the full option. Place your cursor on it and drag it to your group folder. You'll see a plus icon appear and drop it there. Repeat the process with other colors you'll be sampling. If you'd like to adjust the color, double-click on Fill to launch the Color Picker option. Click on the color range to adjust the color or change the color entirely by moving the slider. Specific hex colors can be inputted here. Press OK. To apply no color, select the first swatch with a strike through in the Swatches palette or at the Tools panel. To alter the stroke or outline color, click on Stroke on the Tools panel, which brings it forward. For line thickness, open the Stroke palette on the right, 0.25 being hairline, which you wouldn't want to set any thinner. To import your color group into another file, you can either place the color design into another file or export your color group via the drop-down menu with Save Swatch Library, which can then be opened in another file via the same drop-down menu with Open Swatch Library and selecting Other Library. We can now proceed with colouring our design. Pen Tool and Layers We're going to hand trace the design which may be necessary when the auto trace function doesn't suffice. Place your original drawing onto the canvas again. Zoom in close. Select the illustration. Go to Opacity and Opt for 20%. Open the Layers palette and lock the layer. You'll now see a lock icon indicating as such. Go to the drop down menu and select New Layer, name it Pen Trace. Side note. To allocate object to layers, cut the elements, then go to the Layers drop-down menu, select New Layer and Paste. Go to the Pen tool. Click where you'd like to start. We're looking to create as few nodes as possible, so as to fully optimize the design and final file size. If you simply click to the second point, it'll create a straight line, whereas if one clicks, then keeps the mouse button depressed and drag, you'll create a curved line. 
You'll notice that it'll now offer handles to be able to further manipulate the line once it's been drawn. This tool takes much practice as to the geometric limits of the curved lines it creates. To select the handles, the press Ctrl or Command. This is another shortcut to using the direct selection tool. If you depress Alt and click the node, you'll notice the tool turns into an arrow, where you're now able to change the node from a curved line to a straight line when clicked. Go ahead and complete the tracing. If you click off the path and want to carry on where you left off, click on the last node you made to carry on where you left off. To delete a node, hover over it and you'll see a minus sign as indication. To add a node, hover over the line and then you'll see a plus sign indicating the latter. These various pen tool options can also be selected from the drop-down menu on the Tools panel, indicated by a triangle in the bottom right corner. The pen tool is one of the major design tools to master as many of the other Adobe Suite applications feature it. So once you have grasped it, will have a very valuable skill under your belt. It's also used for other operations like creating masks, which we'll be looking at at a later stage. Creating patterns. Click on your design and hover just below one of the corners of your cursor to turn into a curved double-ended arrow, which indicates the ability to rotate the object. This is a shortcut for the Rotate tool found on the Tools panel. Copy and paste your design and play with sizing and rotation. Right click and select the transform function for more useful options like reflect. To align your designs, click on the objects, depressing shift to include more than one selection, or draw a marquee and open the align palette. Note the align to drop down menu, align to selection, or align to artboard, depending on where you'd like to align to. To create automatic patterns, click on your design, go to Object, Pattern. It will automatically add your newly created pattern to the swatches palette. The Pattern Options palette allows for customization. When you're happy with the results, click Done at the top left. To apply the pattern, click on the new pattern in the swatches palette and draw a shape, which creates what can be described as a preview window. To edit the bounding box, depress Ctrl plus double click the edge nodes to expand the box, which is the shortcut for the direct selection tool. Artboards. You'll want to create multiple artboards for the back of your pillow, along with variations on your design. Click on the artboards palette. At the drop down menu, there's the option to create new or duplicate. We'll choose to duplicate. Hover over the icon to the right of the artboards list and double click to display its options. This is a shortcut for artboards options. For instance, we prefer to move the second artboard further away from the first one, which is better suited for comparison. It's as straightforward as inputting a higher value for the X coordinate, indicating the horizontal plane, where Y represents the vertical plane. Another shortcut would be to go to the artboards tool. Whichever artboard you have selected in the list is the one it will be editing. You will see a dotted line with handles which will allow you to either move the artboard manually, indicated by the multi-direction cursor, or resize. Click back on the selection tool to apply your changes. That's it for now, which I'm sure will keep you busy for many, many, many hours. We can't wait to show you more.